Hi friends, today I'm going to be listening to House of Balloons by The Weeknd. If this is the first video of mine that you're seeing, I will quickly give some context. I've been going through The Weeknd's discography and listening to all the projects I've never heard before. I have technically heard Trilogy before. Um, I put it on one day while I was working and just listened to it as background music. It feels way too generous to say that I've listened to it before, but I have heard it. So I wanted to revisit it and give it the attention it deserves, and I asked people if they wanted to see a reaction. They said yes. Here we are. I have been told that I should listen to the original version that's on Spotify and not the remastered trilogy version, so I will be doing that. And yeah, I won't make this intro any longer. I have my lyrics here, so if you see me looking in this direction, that's what I'm looking at. And let's just get into it with Hi For This. Um, this is the track that I remember the most from this project. I can at least remember the hook off the top of my head, so I think this one will sound familiar. Let's get into it. You don't know what's in store But you know what you're here for Close your eyes Okay. I do remember this song. This sounds familiar. Okay. I like how, despite the fact that this is very dark and atmospheric, it's still very catchy. I also like how the chorus is so explosive because the verse felt really tense, like it was building up to something, so I'm glad we got that payoff. Um, it's impressive how intense this feels or how down-tempo it is. His voice sounds so good here, too. Oh my god, yeah. That chorus hits really hard. Yeah, this is the perfect opener. It's kind of just a perfect song. This is setting the mood for the project really well. I think this was the perfect choice for an opener. So I actually remembered that song a lot more than I thought I did. And it makes sense because it's very catchy and memorable, but it's also very unique, especially for the time it was released. When something was this influential and you listen to it this much later, I think it's kind of hard to grasp how much of an impact it really had. Because I've heard so many things that borrow from this and were made because of this, I think it's hard for me to understand how much this actually changed music in my 2023 brain, so I'm trying to keep context in mind when I'm listening to this, although it's kind of hard. Also, maybe I'm reading too far into this, but I feel like even beyond the surface level lyrical meaning, I feel like this song is also kind of addressing the listener. Like, as much as this song is obviously about a sexual encounter with a girl where he's preparing her for the experience they're about to have, I also feel like it's him preparing me for the musical experience I'm about to have. I don't think I should be high for this, though. Um, it might make for an interesting video. It might actually make for a better video, but I'm not gonna do that. All right, moving on to track number two, which is What You Need. 
Apparently, this is an Aaliyah sample, which is cool. I just wanna take you there. He don't gotta know the reverb vocals are an interesting choice. Okay. I like the vocals better now. I got a little bit worried when I first heard them because I feel like that effect is overused and not always used right, but they work really well here. Shout out to Abel for appreciating tall girls. I appreciate that. Um. I like the way that he's kind of faded into the production. Um, I think it fits the mood really well. It kind of sounds like I'm in a nightmare, but in a cool way. This is another one that's incredibly catchy. It's not necessarily the kind of song that seems like it would be such an earworm, but I know this is going to be stuck in my head. Again, I have no notes. 10. Incredible song. Um, so far, so good. I feel like I would love to hear Abel make a soundtrack for a horror movie. These songs have a really eerie feeling to them. I feel like he could pull it off really well, and I know that he references horror movies a lot in his music, so I feel like that could be an interesting venture for him. Okay, moving on to House of Balloons, Glass Table Girls. Um, dark lyrics, but I feel like that's just going to apply to this whole thing. Okay, so this is Susie and the Banshees. Um, oh my god, okay. So the theme of this song and the theme of the original that this is sampled from fit together so well. Um, I'm kind of nerding out over the sample. I knew it sounded familiar in the beginning and I was like, wait a minute. It's, it's Susie and the Banshees. Okay. Oh my god. I love this song. Okay. Hold on, I need to say something. Okay. I don't even know how to properly explain this, but I feel like the contrast between the sound of the music and the lyrics are putting me in the same state of mind as the girl in the story. Like in the song, she's having a bad trip and he's trying to convince her that everything is fine and that they're having fun. 
And the sound of this song is so ominous and creepy, but the lyrics are telling me that I'm having fun. It's such a cool way of making the listener feel like they're part of the music. I don't even know if it was intentional, but I'm feeling it. This is a really cool song. This is probably my favorite so far. Okay, there's a couple things I want to say. First of all, I'm noticing that there's a consistent narrative in these songs and that this song is talking about the same girl from the first two tracks cheating on her boyfriend with him. One thing that I have consistently enjoyed about Abel's music throughout all these videos is that he has these different beat switches and these different sections in his songs, especially the long ones. I really appreciate it because I have a tendency to zone out or to let my mind wander while I'm listening to music, so I like that he helps me stay engaged. I just love how raw this is, sonically and emotionally. I just feel like the themes of these songs and the production enhance each other so well. It's the perfect combination. But I'm a nice dude with some nice dreams And we can turn this to a nightmare on street Okay, before we move on, I feel like I need to address the elephant in the room here, which is the lyrical content. Um, people always get annoyed in the comments when I talk about the lyrics too much. I don't care. Fuck it. It's my channel. I'll talk about the lyrics if I want to. So over the years, I think the biggest criticism that I've seen of The Weeknd's music is that his lyrics glorify bad behavior. Obviously, these lyrics are pretty dark, but I feel like artists shouldn't be forced to write about things in the most pleasant, agreeable way possible. I feel like anyone with any amount of working brain cells isn't going to listen to this and think that he's encouraging this kind of behavior that's like a ridiculous assumption to make, I think. It's very clear that the narrator here is in a bad place and is absolutely fucking miserable. It reminds me a lot of the criticism that Lana Del Rey got in the beginning of her career for writing about abusive relationships. In my opinion, artists shouldn't have to spell out good morals for you in their music. I think that you should be able to read between the lines and kind of figure out the obvious, which is that they're not encouraging you to do these things. It's so incredibly obvious. I just feel like it's such a lazy criticism. Anyways, soapbox over. Let's move on to the morning. I love the sound of those synths. And the guitar riff, obviously. From the morning to the evening, complaints from the tenants. Got the walls kicking like they six months pregnant. Drinking Alice with our cereal for breakfast. Girls calling cabs at dawn, quarter to seven. Order plane tickets. Cali is the mission. Visit every month like I'm split life living. Let the world listen if I hate his card slipping. Then my nigga stay tight. Got my back like Pippin. Get girls timid, but behind closed doors, they get pulled so rigid. All that money, the money is the motive. All that money, the money is the motive. All that money, the money she be foolish. Girl, put in work, girl, girl, put in work. Girl, put in work, girl, girl, put in work. Shit that I got them on, straight bar, hop into the music. Get shit poppin', 
Zombies of the night Niggas ain't talking if they hype into the crew Get it in like pockets Downtown loving When the moon coming Only place to find base heads and hearts I know that the money is the motive line is obviously about sex work, but I also am assuming that it's about him wanting to make money off his music to have it be his career since I think this is the first time so far that his music has been brought up in the lyrics. I'm loving how, despite how well all of these songs work together, they all feel like unique experiences. I think it's really hard to pull off being cohesive without being repetitive, but so far he's pulling it off perfectly. I kind of got lost in that one, so sorry if I didn't say a whole lot. I feel like this music is trying to pull me into a trance and I'm trying to resist so that I can film a video and talk about it, but um, it's tempting to just like fully get hypnotized by it. So I was gonna say that that was my favorite track so far, but I don't even know if that's the case. I feel like every track so far has been a 10, truly. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be really hard to pick favorite tracks at the end of this video. I have no criticism so far. This is like basically perfect. I can't think of anything negative to say even if I wanted to really. Okay, moving on to Wicked Games. This title feels incredibly familiar to me, but I think that might just be because of the Chris Isaac song. I don't know. She'll never fucking know that These fucking eyes that I'm staring at Bring your love, baby, I could bring my shame Bring the drugs, baby, I could bring my pain I got my heart right here I got my scars right here Bring the cups, baby, I could bring the drugs Okay, yeah this chorus sounds very familiar. It makes sense to me that this is one of the songs that I remember most. It reminds me of High for this in the sense that it feels like if it were executed just a little bit differently, it could have been a huge pop radio hit. Um, but the atmosphere of it is so dark and moody. Um, and obviously I respect that they didn't sacrifice what made this song unique in order to have a big hit. Um, but it's just so well written and catchy and memorable. <laughs> This is also probably my favorite vocal performance so far. He sounds really great here. He sounds really great all over this mixtape, but especially here. Really 
I'm trying to put myself in 2010, which is I think when this released, and I'm trying to imagine that this is the first song of his that I've ever heard. I feel like I'd be like, what the fuck? How is this guy not like a massive star? And now he is. This one is very interesting to me lyrically because I think this is the first track here where he's not portraying himself as the one that's in control of the situation. Like he's admitting that he's hooking up with this girl because he wants the confidence boost and he's asking her to tell him she loves him even though he knows that she doesn't. I think it was really obvious in the previous songs that what he was saying and doing was coming from a place of insecurity and depression but this is the first time that he's saying it outright. I want to say that this is my favorite track so far, but at this point I feel like a broken record. I'm just repeating myself. But yes, at this point, this is my favorite track. All of these tracks so far are like top tier, not only the weekend tracks, but just like songs in general. I think every song has been a 10 so far. Okay, next up is The Party and The After Party. Understand your body wants it. I know your thoughts. Oh, you bout it, bout it. You're a big girl, and it's your world. And I'ma let you do it how you want. Right with it, right with it. With your Louis V bag, tats on your arms, high heel shoes, make you six feet tall. Everybody wants it, you can have them all. But I Okay. First of all, Abel, if you like tall girls, I'm literally right here. Anyways, so we're back to the confident, dominant persona. He knows, or at least wants to think that no matter who's attracted to her, she's going to want him. I think it's really interesting how the lyrics and the sound of this mixtape contradict each other. If you just read the lyrics to these songs without listening to them, you would get a totally different impression of what this mixtape is and I think that's really interesting. You don't gotta ask me. Okay. I'm very much into the Beach House sample. Um, if you know anything about my music taste, you know that I'm obsessed with Beach House, so this is a fun crossover. I get unreasonably excited when artists I like sample other artists I like. I get this weird parasocial thing where I'm like, oh my god, we have the same music taste. Um, I don't know. I also think that using Victoria's voice is an interesting way of including the girl in the song and showing her perspective. Maybe we can just Safe is perfect. I have no notes. I'm just having a great time at this point. I feel like I'm running out of things to say, but I'm just having a great time. So... From what I've heard, the reason that people asked me to do this- Hold on. I'm gonna pause before I talk, because what the fuck is going on? So from what I've heard, the reason people wanted me to do the original version is because apparently in the remastered version, the samples didn't get cleared or something. And I'm trying to imagine these songs without the samples. I feel like that would be really weird. It's weird to try to imagine these songs without the samples. I don't know what they would sound like. I will have to check that out on my own time because I feel like something would really be missing. I don't know if some of these samples made it and some of them didn't, but I don't know. I feel like this just wouldn't be the same without them. Don't you lie, me, lie me. I know you know I know you wanna Ooh. Yeah. 
carpet, I'll get on it after four. My sessions are the strong. These lyrics are so dark. Should have fucking bold, but I fucking bold. Give me right attention, I'll start drowning from my wrist. I don't know whether okay some of these lyrics are funny and some of them are very not funny <laughs> so i believe that fades right into coming down but i'll pause for a second um to give an update that this is still a 10 so so far so good um yeah let's just get right into coming down But don't know how I'm gonna say I guess that I can only say one thing Girl, I've been bad again Girl, I've been bad again Forget what you mean to me Open oh, what you mean to me Foolish boy This is actually really depressing though. <laughs> So apparently this is a sample from an anime Fate Stay Night. I wish you would not trouble me. What you are doing makes me uncomfortable. You are cowardly. You learned about my past and used that against me several times, even when you know my answer, even though you know my sins. Um, yeah, the song is really fucking sad. <laughs> I will say that this is probably my least favorite track so far. 
But first of all, that could very well change. Um, also, if this is the worst track on this project, that's still pretty impressive because it's still good. Um, everything so far has been a 10. I feel like this is probably like an 8, which is still good. I think the only thing weighing it down for me is that it's pretty repetitive, um, which makes it especially difficult when I'm making a video and I'm trying to find things to comment on. I feel like I would have enjoyed it a lot more if I was listening to it on my own and I could kind of let myself get lost in it, so I feel like it will probably grow on me. Anyways, let's move on to the penultimate track, which is Loft Music. Oh. Another beach house sample. I'm down. I'm glad this picked up a bit after the last track. Interesting. I really love the production on this one. The beat feels like it has so much movement to it. It feels like it's like bending around my head. This track is really strange in a cool way. I feel like it's taking a lot of detours that I would not have expected it to take. This is so creepy, but also kind of serene. This sounds really cool. It's kind of disorienting. I don't really know how to describe it. Um, that sound keeps like giving me chills on my back. <laughs> this song feels kind of psychedelic, which obviously fits the themes of this mixtape very well. <laughs> that had a cool outro. I wasn't expecting something so drawn out and ambient to be on this mixtape, but um, yeah, that was interesting. I really like that track. Um, so we definitely picked up after the last one that I wasn't crazy about. I also like the I know everything line coming before the song The Knowing. I feel like a lot of thought was put into the track sequencing and how these songs would flow into each other, which I really appreciate, obviously. All right, on to the last track, which is The Knowing. Okay, this is a Cocteau Twin sample. I knew it sounded familiar. Um, it's from Cherry Colored Funk, which is on Heaven or Las Vegas, which is my third favorite album of all time. So, um, once again, I'm way more excited than I should be over a sample. I know.
like how he says, you probably thought that you'd break my heart, but it's okay, because it's pretty obvious by the tone of the song that it's not okay. Um, once again, it's, it's like I said earlier, anyone with any functioning brain cells can listen to this and realize that this is not trying to glorify this behavior, like I said earlier. It's very obvious that the narrator here is not in a good place. Um, I don't know how much of this is autobiographical or how much of this is him playing a character. Um, I don't really know anything about his personal life, but yeah. The use of guitar has been consistently amazing throughout this mixtape. Okay, vocals. Like this has the potential to be a 10. Absolutely. I can't wait to go back and listen to this after this because I feel like this might become a 10 for me. I think there's something to be said about how you start and finish a project, like the opener track and the closer track, and um, High for This and The Knowing are both phenomenal tracks. I was going to point out that he made another side closing track, but I don't know why that's supposed to be surprising considering so much of his music is so goddamn depressing. All I need is for coming down to grow on me a little bit, which I feel like it will, and this will be a 10. I get the hype. Um, it's always risky going into projects like these that are so beloved because there's a lot of hype, but this lived up to it. Um, so that's really exciting. I feel like it kind of goes without saying that this is my favorite project of his now. I am really excited to listen to the rest of Trilogy because I remembered more of this than I thought I would. However, I had a quick look at Thursday and Echoes of Silence and I didn't recognize any of the song titles whatsoever. So I feel like I'm going to remember way less of those than I did with this, which is exciting. I don't even know how to pick favorite tracks. Um, don't hold me to these because I feel like, depending on the day, any of these could be my favorite track, but I'm going to go with Wicked Games, um, House of Balloons, Glass Table Girls, and The Morning for now. Yeah, I feel like with everything that's been said about this mixtape by other people, but also just by me in this video, I feel like there's like nothing left to say. It's just a really amazing project. Like I said earlier, I know that this was super influential and um, it's hard for me to grasp just how much of an impact it has, but I know that this is a really important piece of music. Anyways, I'll see you next time for Thursday. I'm really excited to get into the rest of this trilogy, especially because this was so fantastic. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Social media is linked below as always. Feel free to subscribe. I have other videos on the weekend if you're interested. And, um, goodbye.